welcome, welcome. Yeah, I feel the love. Thank you. Thank you. Take a seat and sit with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo, you know I got my mug today, right? Because every time I get up in the morning, I love to have some words of encouragement. And I want to encourage y'all to get whatever you could put it on. Just make sure you find those words of the day that get you through the day, where you set your mind for whatever, you, whatever your goals are. Or even when you're feeling empty in certain areas or you need a little direction and understanding, all of that stuff. These little affirmations help me. So I always put it in my mug in the morning. And this one says... Trust your talent. <laughs> and I can't help but to sip from my cup. You know, you, you got to trust the gifts, you know? And also your journey. Yeah, that's an important thing. And, and it's a new year, obviously. And, and sometimes we don't know which turns it's going to take and where we're going and what's going to happen. But, you know, I always say, if God placed me there, I have no choice but to be... Prepare. Yes, yes, yes. So trust your talent and trust your journey along with that, all right? Y'all heard that from Mama Hood. Okay, now I, I, I'm gonna switch gears on y'all if that's okay, because I like to pick y'all brain, okay? Yes, let's see. Now, I have been so excited about, the, you, you, you know sometimes you get so excited about a special someone and you think they that perfect one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. And every time you see him, you know, you hear that little Luther Vandross music in the background. <laughs> and you think they perfect and you all in love. <laughs> Don't get quiet on me now. Mm -hmm. And then y'all on the same page, so you think you on the same level. Yep. Oh, y'all got real quiet. Yeah. Y'all don't know that special someone? Yeah. Somebody got him? Yeah. Send him my way. Okay. <laughs> Well, but then they go off and do something. Or you see something and you're like, hold the line. Now, I don't know about that. And then you get to looking at them sideways and they ain't so perfect no more. We call that the deal breaker, the tie breaker, right? You know what that is? So I want to see how you guys feel about these deal breaking scenarios. Y'all ready? Yeah. Let's see. Okay, here's deal breaker number one. He's a great kisser, but he has bad breath. <laughs> now, I, I, any, anybody on that? Because I know how I feel about it. I want to hear how y'all feel about it. Ma'am, can you stand on up? Hello. <laughs> you look lovely. Oh, thank you so much. Lovely and red. What's your name and where are you from? I'm Priscilla and I'm from Los Angeles. Oh, nice. <laughs> I want to know, is that a deal breaker for you? That's a, that's a tough one, because, I mean, is it a medical condition? I'm going to bed. <laughs> what? OK. That's a valid question, right? Because, I mean, if it's a medical condition, it ain't really their fault. So, I mean, yeah. that could be fixed. OK. Possibly. So it's not a deal breaker for you? It depends on the man. <laughs> it depends on the man. That's right. Okay, I want you to elaborate. What kind of man? Ooh, okay. Um, well, he definitely has to be tall, dark, and handsome. Okay. He definitely has to be successful. Okay. Secure. Uh-huh. Transparent. Okay. And his breath can smell like anything. <laughs> Anybody else? Talk to me, sir. What's your name and where you from? My name is Edward. I'm from Pasadena. Mm -hmm. Come on, Edward. I had to get up. What's your thoughts on it? I definitely think it's a deal breaker. It's a deal breaker? Definitely a deal breaker. Okay. It's easy to brush your teeth. <laughs> so I don't know why they shouldn't be able to do that and have a clean breath. So definitely a deal breaker for sure. That's a deal breaker. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. Deal breaker two. He loves his mom, but he drops everything to answer her calls. And I do mean everything. That's a, that's a deal breaker? 
who can I hear from? Ma'am? Hi, my name is Lisa, and I am from Florida. Ah, nice. I love Florida. I'm listening. Now, wait a minute now. He has to love his mama. I love that. Aw. He has to love his mama, so people have to get over that. Okay. Because if you love your mama, you'll love that woman. Yes. That's how you... I feel. Yeah. So if y'all was, like, out at dinner or, you know, and mom called? I mean, it's fine. That's Because I love my mama, and I want him to love his mama as much as I do. Uh, you better speak. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else got some on that one? That's right, you better love your mama. Hello. Oh, hello, how are you, what's your name? I'm JC. Where you from? I'm from Los Angeles. Ah, nice. <laughs> is that a, what is that for you? Is that a deal breaker? Uh, if you drop everything, everything? You caught the everything, like, didn't you, girl? If you drop me, bro, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, look, I, look, I love my mama, I understand that. <laughs> I love that he loves his mama, too. Look. <laughs> But you gotta love me too. Like, what's up? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> oh my God. I love both of y'all response. Oh my God, that's amazing. Okay, deal breaker number three. You met this great guy, but he likes to FaceTime you without warning. Please, please stand up. What is, is, this, a, is this a deal breaker for you? Because it is for me. Oh boy, okay. Oh. What's your name and where are you from? Amy Yaniak and I'm from Sherman Oaks. Nice. <laughs> is this a deal breaker for you? So, actually, I don't think it's a deal breaker because then he really cares about me and he loves me and I know he's thinking about me. Oh. Yeah. Well, you can call me and tell me you love me. <laughs> that's true, that's true. I don't want to be looked at 25. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Anybody else? Hello. Hi. What's, what's your name and where are you from? Karen from San Diego. San Diego, I love San Diego. Is that a, is that a deal breaker for you? Yes, because um, he's just showing his insecurities there. I'm fine. You can check in on me later. I'm, uh, text is just fine because I can still be getting my mani-pedi and tell you I'm doing fine. Thank you. You don't need to be seeing my face because you saw it, and you saw how, how cute it's looking before. You better tell I, him. Yes. Right? Why you so need to see I, where I'm at? I think if he's FaceTiming all the time, he's just a little insecure himself. He's doing some checking in on you, and there's got to be some trust issues going on there, because he's looking over your shoulder to see whose shadow he's seeing in the mirror and stuff like that. You better tell him. Yeah. Thank you. Thank y'all for sharing with me. We have a great show. We'll be back. I don't need to hear nothing else. She said what she said. So today I want to take a look at some of my favorite segments we've done on the show. I love sitting down with Joe McHale. Take a look. So listen, so What's you that? were on American Idol, right? I was. I have not kept up. Have you done anything since? <laughs> I, I just somehow ended up here on a whole talk She's show. She's got an Oscar, like, guys. <laughs> She's got an Oscar. Oh, my God. I have two local Emmys. Thank you. <laughs> local. <laughs> I'll take them. Montana, Idaho, Washington. <laughs> yeah. I've never met you before. We've never met. Yeah, and now you're called J-Hud. I know that's been you could a while. Call me whichever, you could call me Jenny. You could call me J-Hud. You could call me Jenny. I instantly anything you call me with Jay a J. Mick? J. Mick. Which is... I like derogatory that. Derogatory towards the Irish. Is it? It's okay, I'm okay. half Irish. Okay. The lower half. The lower... <laughs> it's weird. We'll get to the real questions at some point, but... Well, I have a real question for uh -oh. you. Oh, I'm very excited. So you, you've done adventures on mountains. What, what else did you do on the mountain? I thought you just climbed a mountain. Tell oh, me a, what you did. I have a death wish. Uh, I am an old man now, and so... The way I stay alive is by doing things that could, you know, get you killed. So, uh, no, I um, did a commercial for this thing called uh, uh, Certified Angus, Be Angus, uh, Angus Beef, and um, they were like, hey, will you eat a steak dinner on the side of a cliff? And there, there it is. And uh, they weren't joking around. Usually on this stuff, it's all very, like, controlled. This was, like, they're like, okay, jump over, go get your dinner. That guy, his name is Ty, who I ate with, is a cattle rancher in 
In, uh, <laughs> yeah, he literally makes the beef in, in, in Colorado. So he makes it in a yes. Yeah, will you do that with us next Absolutely time? Absolutely not. Come on. <laughs> Certified no, no. would love to have you. No, I sing you down from the mountaintop of the valley, but Jennifer is not climbing on oh, the side of no mountain. The beef was very good. No, no. Now, what I did do was I, I got to sing for the Obamas, and I heard you got to perform for them quite a bit. What was that like for you? Well, the Obamas made me rappel down a different cliff, and then I was like, <laughs> why are we doing this? We could do this at the White House. <laughs> I hosted the White House Correspondents' Dinner, and I, the, the cliff, I was not, this, that was the this most was scary. nervous I have ever been in my life. And then you look at the audience, and yes. it's, it's like a wax museum. Not you guys, uh, but you're like, there's Robert De Niro, there's that Dos Equis guy, there's <laughs> Russell Wilson. It was like, it didn't make any sense. I, I understand. See, I like to block out the audience and just look above people when it's an audience like that, then I'm afraid of. So. What if the lights are on on the audience like this? Then I look above. Really? Yeah, like I look over until I'm comfortable enough. Maybe you could take this tip. See, now I see you waving at me, so I could wave right, back. That's... Until I find the courage to look at the audience. See, that's a performance trick. So if I had sat down t today and just went, hey, what's up? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> then I would meet Great you where you are. There. So you know what? I'm actually good. How are you? Yeah, and you then know? eventually I'd be like, I ate beef on the side of a cliff. Yeah, and then I'm going to say, I'm not eating beef with you on the side of the cliff. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, okay, wait, so wait, I have to, because <laughs> when you did American Idol, you had never been on a, in a crowd that big, or it was the entire nation watching all the time. And you know what else? I did not sing, start singing with my eyes open until I was 19. So when I so was you're on, just running into all sorts of stuff. Yeah, they just you know what? The drum kit. Yes, they just throw me in that pit. Just, just I have to just swim. So by the time I got to Idol, I'm like, wait a minute, they want me to perform. I grew up singing in church. You sing from a, a certain place, and you close your eyes and you sing for the Lord. But then come the show, I'm like, I gotta perform to an audience, to people. Oh, that was scary. So what I did was I started to create a game out of it. Like how you look at me upside the head right now, people in the audience would be like this. <laughs> and that used to be intimidating. So I created a game in my mind where I said, I am going to stare that person down until they have to turn away from me. And that's what taught me how to break the ice. You see how you're looking at me right now? Yeah, Put the that's... camera on this face. That's what happens. And that can be intimidating, which is why when you receive such amazing energy like you guys give, that feeds us as performers. And I think we appreciate that because that gives us something to go off of. Was it hard to stare down Seacrest because he was so much lower than you? <laughs> You were like. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. We'll be right back. I love chatting with this next guest because, y'all, she had me cracking up. Here's another one of my favorite segments. Watch this. We're back with Regina Hall. People are really excited for this. Tell us about the best man, the, the final chapter. It, it starts off where we're probably a year after where we left the last best man. Mm -hmm. And, um... I mean, it's quite a journey, it's eight episodes, but we wrap up a beginning and then kind of where they go from there, you know, and, and, and how it ends up. So it's, it is, I love I'm my I'm excited co -star. for it. Oh my God. I know. The Best Man was like one of my favorite movies. Did you ever think you'd be doing this 20 years later? Did I, oh God, no, I was, it was my first movie. I was happy Your to get the job. Movie. No, and there weren't like sequels for romantic comedies right. back then. So I just was really, ex I didn't have the script. You know, back mm. then they were just like, I was trying to figure out what it was about. Like from my little lines, mm. I was like, well, wait, I see this. They only gave you little snippets. They only it. gave me my sides. Yeah, at just that sides. point, just, just your sides. That's, and that's just what you have to audition with. Mm -hmm. And so you didn't know because no. you just No, so had I didn't know sides. who else was in it. I didn't know anything. Well, we glad you know now. And that, yeah. That we get a whole, <laughs> a whole nother chapter. That is amazing. Okay, I cannot have you here and not have a girlfriend moment. Okay. So this is a, a oh, this is yeah, this is, we gotta have a little fun because okay. I love having girlfriends on here. Okay. So this is a dating deal breaker game. Oh boy. Oh, I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Oh boy. You ready for this? Yeah. Okay. You get married, but they want to live in separate homes. In se in, in are the homes close? It don't say that on okay. here. I, I like that. I like separate homes. Really? Yeah. You will marry. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what I would love? I like a bridge home. Have you seen those? Where it's like two-sided, there's a bridge in the middle. I like the sun. Yeah, that. that way it's like, you know, you can, you, that, you can have a, if you have children, you can have the larger size of the bridge home. And then you can, you can and then it's clean, and then if relatives come, he can slide on over to yours, and then they can stay on the, I just, I don't know. 
I like the idea of a bridge home. I like the sound of the bridge home. Yeah. I've never heard of that. This one is interesting. They're your doctor. They're your doctor. Uh huh. They're your doctor. Oh, can you do what kind of like your what kind of doctor? <laughs> that is a good question. Have you been there anyway? <laughs> I don't know. Well, what kind of doctor that you can't do it? You know, I had a crush on a gynecologist. What was and that's that like? always awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I was young. You know, I was like 21. He never knew I had a crush until right now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and he just was cute. You know, you're a little <laughs> shy. But as lo I mean, I didn't have, I wasn't coming with problems. That's probably when it would have been awkward. <laughs> like, if he'd have discovered, you know, like, an ex wheelchair, you really been embarrassed. <laughs> really thinking this yeah. through. But he wasn't, he didn't notice me at all. No? No, I think he was just working down there. <laughs> I, I never felt anything, you know, like, inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I got another one. They're a bad tipper. <gasps> no. No. That's no. the tiebreaker? You know why? Because I was a waitress, and that's, okay. a, that's a big deal. And okay. Yeah. Okay. And when you work and you're, like, dealing with, and you're, you're working with people, like, it's a sign of generosity. He don't tip, he don't, now it's a, other stuff going wrong. Okay, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. You're wise. Mm -hmm. oh, see, I see you. Mm -hmm. Okay. They don't want you to work. Oh. Well, how much? <laughs> I'm like, how much, how much money does he have? He better have some money if he like, wants to work. Like, are we talking like, like, I mean, are we talking like, like, I mean, let me know how much. Because, I mean, because if, if he's got a ton, <laughs> I'm going to have to travel with him, so I can't work. Okay. Because if he's got that much, I got to stay focused, too. I got to keep a... You got to watch, your job is to watch it. Well, now the home is no longer a bridge home. It's one, we're, I'm like, baby. We live in. <laughs> we're living together. We need, we need to do this. We're a unit. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you Thank you, so thank you. Give much. them a hand, y'all. Thanks, Regina. We'll be right back. When Tony Hill came on the show, he had me laughing while talking about me throwing shoes on The Voice. Take a look. I, okay, I no, can't... This is a huge honor to meet you. It's nice to meet you. No, huge. Let me tell you right now. I don't watch a lot of TV. I'm, it's my business, I should. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I watch... When I'm traveling and I'm trying to find something to watch, uh -huh. I go on YouTube and I watch the blind auditions on The Voice, like the compilation videos. Have you guys ever seen really? that? Yeah. Guys, okay. <laughs> First of all, you're crazy talented. Thank you. Thank you. Crazy. <laughs> Thank you. Crazy. But do yourself a favor, the, the duet you did with Tom Jones where you did sang Mad World. Yes. You guys know what I'm talking about? Y'all yes. saw it. <sighs> then you sang Impossible Dream. Uh-huh. Yes. I've, I've hunted you down. You watch these yeah. things? And then really? I love when you throw your shoe. That's a compliment. <laughs> I love when you throw your shoe. I don't, I don't fully understand it. Okay, I can I explain yeah, it to you? Please break it down. So, okay, when you throw a shoe at somebody, well, yeah, when yeah. it just hits my spirit, I don't even okay. realize I threw the shoe. But it's like, it's like equivalent to giving somebody a standing ovation. It's, a, it's the biggest compliment. So if you catch a shoe, oh, baby, really? I'm a fan. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna be expecting that shoe to I've had people to throw... <laughs> don't make me take it off, because I will get Same. you. To... I'll just, I'll just... Look at those nails. You there. see that? Thank you. I got a shoe! You got the shoe! That means I am a huge fan. <laughs> Those nails, Jay Hud. Those nails. See, everything represents something. Wow. This is my Those son like my awesome. nails long. Those are awesome. And then you know I was in the movie Cats too, so You were in that's the my clothes movie Cats. from Cats. <laughs> You know, okay, so, but tell me, you grew yes. up on, on the uh, South Side? I, well, or in the in, South? In the South. I grew up on the South Side and you grew up in the South. I grew up in the South. What was the holidays like? So, um, okay, so yeah, 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 the holidays were, were really good and we, we always try to go back like twice, twice, twice a year we go to the holidays. Mm -hmm. But in the South, as we know, the sports is a really, really big deal. And okay. it's like, I mean, it's pretty much a religion down there, football. I was not a sports kid. No. Um, I was, you know, I was an actor type, but my dad signed me up for swimming once, and I was, this shows how bad I was at sports. I was, I was swimming, and you know, there's the lanes, everybody's swimming, and my dad said I just stopped in the middle of the meet when everybody's swimming, and he's like, what are you doing? 
And I said, what? I'm exhausted. <laughs> I just, like, exhausting. I just, like, stopped. So I wasn't really, I didn't really fit in, but then I found theater and yeah. really got into it and loved it. Do you sing? <laughs> okay. All right, let me, let me I break I could throw my shoe at get you <laughs> again, Tony, if you could sing <laughs> no, me a song. I'm not going to get a shoe for that. Um, <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I was in the car recently, and my dog, okay. So I started singing in the car. I like to sing in the car. I'm uh -huh. sure you do, too. So I was singing, and my, my, my uh, daughter is sitting next to me, and she goes, Dad, do you, um, do you think you have a good voice? And I said, I said, no, I don't think I have that great of a voice. And she goes, well, at least you're aware of it. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and I was like, all right. <laughs> Let's turn that down a notch. <laughs> wait, wait. How old is your daughter? She's, uh, she's 16. She'll be 17 in February. What is she into? Lord, help. It, I, hey. I have a 13-year-old, okay. so I yeah, can only yeah, imagine. Yeah. She's beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's my little one. So what is she into? What does her. she do? She, she likes, she, she does enjoy theater, but right now she's, in, she's a high schooler, and she's just, she's driving. driving? She just started driving. Well, that's good. Is it? I, well. Because, uh, <laughs> I, it? well, I, you, you know, I, I have this, you know you have these apps that can track them. Okay. Because, you track her? Yeah, I track her. Can you tell how fast she's speeding? <laughs> yeah. You can? Yeah. So, like, but here's the thing. It's not, in L.A., I do get nervous. I mean, here's the thing. I'm not worried so much about my daughter driving. It's everybody else. Right. My mother used that's, to say you have to drive for others. That's, that's okay. what scares me the most. But it is really, talk about surrender. Like, it's, it's terrifying yeah. to just, like, that day she goes. and Because I also miss, I don't know if you guys are like this, but... I miss the time in the car, mm -hmm. like taking her to school right. and talking about the day. And that was like, that was a time we connected. And then now she's just- Like dad, I got now to go. Now she wants you the radio home. and that's it. Yes, and the music the radio. is way too loud. To yeah, way too loud. See, my son is 13 and this music is driving me crazy. It's so loud, I can't even hear Siri to even know where I'm going, child. Yes. It's like guys, yes. and then they screaming in the back seat. But see, I'm looking forward to him driving me around. You yeah. make her drive you around? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's it's the like plus. A, it's an Uber driver in the family. Right, in the family. <laughs> yes. And you give them, that's right. Yes, <laughs> it's true. Okay, okay, well then talk to me about this. So you work with icons Bette Miller and I, Liza Minnelli. What, I know you got some stuff. Yeah, I just worked with Bette, Bette. I worked with yeah, BM. Uh, <laughs> I worked with Bette on Hocus Pocus 2. Okay. I was just in Hocus Pocus with her. And then uh, Liza Minnelli played my girlfriend... Your girlfriend? ...on Arrested Development what years ago. <laughs> yeah. And here's... Oh, yeah, there's... <laughs> there's you. And here's... here's I was just talking... I was just telling the story on a podcast, but one of my favorite stories is when Liza took us out... took my wife and I out to lunch. Uh -huh. And she was talking about this concert that she just did at Radio City Music Hall and all this kind of stuff. And we were like, what songs did you, you sing? And she sang, I, I sang the song Liza with a Z. And I was like, oh, I, I don't know that. At the time, I didn't know that song. She breaks out in the song in the backseat of my car. Wow. And she'd done the song so many times that she could hear the orchestration. Oh, wow. So she was like, Liza with a Z, ba da ba ba bam <laughs> In the backseat of my car. Could you concentrate I, driving? No, my wife and I are like, this is better than our wedding day. Yes. What's happening right now? <laughs> That's something you'll it never forget. It was the best. And she's, the thing is like, you know, a lot of icons like that, they're yes. either maybe kind of difficult, but like she is, she is the kindest, most gracious That's beautiful. person. Like you. Aw. Much like you. Thank you. I'll take that. Thanks, Tony. We can't wait to see you again. We'll be right back. Our next guest has gone viral on TikTok after sharing this roundup of her dating experience through 2022. Take a look. Welcome to my 2022 dating wrapped. If there's one thing about me, I love a PowerPoint and apparently a first date because I went on 18 this year. Where did I meet these men? I met one in the wild. We kissed at a bar on New Year's Eve and things really went downhill from there. Tinder and Hinge split pretty evenly. One from Facebook dating, I 1000% would not recommend that. I would rather ask my father to buy me laundry than to get back on Facebook dating. How many dates did we go on? Most of these men only made it one or two. Very few made it past to the third date and the high score was six dates. What do we do? A lot of dinner, drinks, walks. This other category includes smoothies, ice cream, acai bowls, and Target. Who ended things? Me, about half of the time. A few times mutual and sometimes him. I cried over two of these men, which coincidentally is the same number of parking tickets I got while on dates. This is the amount of money I spent on dates. I wish I had not calculated this number. What could I have done with this money? Literally anything else would have been better. Have I learned anything here? Probably not. The end. <laughs> Please welcome TikToker Amber Smith. Okay, tell us, how did this all come about? 
So I had seen another creator create this trend. I watched a couple videos and I thought, I went on a lot of dates this year and I love making a good PowerPoint, so I think I can make one. <laughs> and it kind of just took off from there. Wow, what is your dating profile? Um, so it's a little bit of everything. I am, I would say a very well-rounded person. Um, so I describe myself as kind of a basic bitch, kind of not. <laughs> um, I love to watch reality dating shows, but also I work in FinTech. I have a side business that I run. I am in the top 0.5% of Taylor Swift listeners. That's very important for a man oh. to know about me. Um, <laughs> trying to retire in my 30s, I have big goals, and I love chilies. So <laughs> that's what these men knew about me before we, we went on dates. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm, I'm curious to know, and what kind of men are you trying to attract with your profile? Um, I guess maybe like a nice like white collar, hardworking guy. Mm. I went on many dates with software developers. They, none of them were successful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you prepared your presentation quite well. Can you walk us through it? Yeah, um, this, I did have to go through my calendar and my phone to look through what dates I had been on. But as you can see, one date, two dates, usually at that point, I know if we're compatible and men kind of get that too. Um, and then these guys making it three, five, six dates. This guy on the third date, I found out he lives with his parents. Oh. And I was like, I don't that know. That was a deal breaker for you, girl. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then a couple guys made it five and six dates. And I was like, oh, that's pretty good. How did you meet your dates? Um, a lot of dating apps. I did meet one. We kissed at a bar on New Year's Eve. Um, I did not recreate that this year because it was unsuccessful. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Facebook dating was also not very great. Um, but Tinder and Hinge, that's where I spent most of my time. Most of your time, was yeah. they a bit more successful there? I think yes. I did have to go through a lot of guys, a lot of no's. A I don't swipe no's. right very often. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what kind of dates did you go on? Um, you know the typical like? like dinner drinks, those were very popular. We went on walks. People in my comments were very uh, mad about this. I was like, well, it's a nice like free activity. Get out, enjoy the weather, do something active. This other category includes we went to get smoothies, we went to Target, we went thrifting. Um, so really anything else. So you went to Target for a date? Yes. What do you do on a date at Target? Um, so we just walked around and looked at stuff. It actually worked out well because you would walk down the game aisle, be like, oh, have you ever played this game? My family loves this game. Or through the pet aisle, and you'd be like, oh, do you have any pets? Did you have any growing up? So it really sparked conversation. Um, but again, people were very pressed about that. They were like, you should not go on any date with a man who's not going to spend money on you. So he, he didn't pay for the game? Um, I didn't buy anything at Target. He got some, like, groceries. <laughs> he, oh, oh my God. He, he <laughs> was very efficient, I'll give him that. He's like, I'm gonna get this date out of the way, I'm gonna crank through my to-do list. Um, he did tell me though, I was not the first girl he had taken to Target. <laughs> okay, let's go back to this Target and the thrift thing. That sounded like, like a good time. What, what happened with them? So Target guy said after our second date that he just wanted to be friends. Uh -huh. Um, this thrifting date, we went thrifting, we were each gonna buy our own stuff, he gets up to pay, he only has an American Express card and they don't take American Express. I'm like, okay, I'll pay for it. And he goes, I'll pay you back. Um, we get dinner at this barcade, it's like a little cheap piece of pizza, we're there for a while. I'm like, I think we gotta go, I think my parking meter is gonna expire. You can see where this is going. Um, <laughs> he doesn't wanna leave, he wants to keep playing games. He goes, if you get a ticket, I'll pay for it. We get outside, I have a ticket. He no longer is offering to pay for it. What? <laughs> did he ever pay you back for the ticket? He did randomly. He cash out to me like weeks later. Um, yeah, so you... So he must have felt guilty. Did you go on should. a date with him again? No. Mm -hmm. uh, Y'all said no. <laughs> you knew that wasn't happening, huh? That's, you're a smart girl, I could tell. I'm, I learn. Okay, so tell me, what are your top three dating do's and don'ts? Okay, so what I'm wanting from someone is someone who's ambitious, who likes to travel, um, and someone with a personality. Some of these guys, I'm like, oh, this guy's really boring on the first date, and then there's no second date. Um, as for things I don't want, I don't want someone who lives with his parents. I... Smart girl. 
If he doesn't own a couch, which was a problem more often than I would like to admit. So a lot of your dates didn't have a couch? Not a lot of them, but like, if you're dating me, I would like you to have a couch. <laughs> you better tell him. And then uh, finally, if he complains about his situation, his job, where he lives, but he's not making any steps to change that. That was important to me. Y'all hear that? <laughs> she put it out there. Okay, so looking back at 2022, what do you have planned different for 2023? Are you gonna... So I think I'm going to try to focus more on meeting men in person. Actually, my shuttle driver at the airport tried yes. to set me up with his son on my way here. <laughs> um, so, okay. <laughs> if you are watching this and you have a son named Tanner and you're in Iowa, I'll be sliding into his DMs. <laughs> well, you know what? See, I'm no matchmaker, but I think I can help you with your reimbursement. So the money you spent on your, your last dates, mm -hmm. that's, I just want to help you out with that. So can we uh, give you your money back? Here is $368.36, girl, for you. We believe in you. You're a smart girl. <laughs> Get your man. I believe you will in 2023. Thank you for coming. Thank you so you much. You are amazing and extremely smart. Take some tips from Amber. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit jenniferhudsonshow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.